by Rota Brow House Bock Beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. It is fucking freezing out there and it hasn't stopped raining for ages. So, in keeping with German tradition, I thought, <laughs> I thought I'd have a Bock beer. <laughs> I don't know where the fucking tradition comes from, but I've just been doing some research on the beer. And it says that October is the start of Bock beer season in uh, Franconia. And that's where Boy the Bayreuther Brow House is based. Now, I've tried their Hellas on the channel and it hasn't been bad at all. And they also do the, the Actien range of beers. I've tried their Zwickel beer on the channel and that was very nice indeed as well. So I've got reasonably high hopes for this. Now, I've done quite a few box on the channel. We mate Norby has brought this over from Germany for me and he brought over quite a few box. Some are good. The Gravensteiner is the one that stands out for me. That's probably one of the best Bock beers I've tried. Maybe because it was dark, maybe because it was a cross between a Dunkel and a, and a Doppelbock. It had that kind of rich caramel malt type flavor to it. This stuff looks quite decent though. It's like a, it, it's like a traditional Bock basically. Bocks are traditionally malt forward. The hop character, there isn't that much. It's more to do with the malt. They're seasonal, and they, as as By Roy to say on their website, uh, the season for drinking them starts in October. And apparently, these beers are hard to get hold of because they're only sold around the brewery, and some of them make it online to the website. So this is I'm quite privileged to have some of this, and I'm sort of doing this in two months because I'm not sure how easy that's going to be for you to get hold of. But I'll do it anyway. I'm sure there's people over in Germany who can uh, get hold of this. So. Yeah, I'll do it for their benefit. But if you do see this on online um, and it gets a good review from me, well, do it anyway if you want. And don't take my word for it. But um, if you can see it, then get it. Now, it's uh, it's got the traditional uh, Billy Goat head on there. Can you see that? That is a sort of symbol, certainly on Bavarian beers, for a Bock beer, a Doppelbock. They all have that on there. It's a corruption of the, the original place where Bock was first brewed, that was Einbeck, and if you go to Bavaria, they they speak with a, a different German accent and they substitute some words. I'm, I've sort of likened it to in the UK. If you went to, say, Newcastle or even, even Scotland, some parts of Scotland, the, uh, they substitute words and they have a, a, a distinctive accent and sometimes they pronounce words differently to, to us hillbillies down here in the south. But um, I'm digressing a little bit, but I'm sure you knew that anyway. I, I mention it on all the Bock beers that I do review. Um, that's really all I can say about the brewery. Um, Bayreuth is quite an interesting place, actually, because it's based in Franconia. It's just north of Nuremberg, and it has quite a, a strong association with the composer Wagner. Now, I don't know whether you're a fan of classical music. Me, personally, pff, um, I don't actually mind listening to Wagner. I first heard him, and I'm sure many, many of you have as well, by watching the film Apocalypse Now, where they've got the flight of the Valkyries when all the helicopters are going over on that, on that raid. And uh, I've sort of listened to his music then, and sort of after that, and some of it. For the classical world, it is quite heavy. Um, you could sort of class them as the sort of Metallica of the, uh, of the classical music world. Now, a lot of people don't like them because of Wagner's unsavory views. He was very anti-Semitic and uh, yeah, generally uh, had some questionable views. The other uh, association that they have in Bayreuther is with the philosopher Nietzsche. Um, not sure whether you're uh, familiar with him, but um, yeah, he's a, it's a bit heavy going, put it that way. And uh, he actually didn't like Bayreuther. He's, he thought it was uh, a symbol of the uh, decadence in in Germany in the 19th century and basically wished it every ill will. 
Um, they, they were actually bombed quite badly in World War II in 1945, and in, and in April 1945, um, Bayreuth, was, uh, Bayreuth was bombed by, I think it was the RAF, uh, don't quote me on that, but I think it was the RAF, and yeah, they basically flattened the place, and they also damaged the brewery quite extensively as well. well I think they were going, there was um, a V2 research centre there, the V2 obviously being the um, ballistic missile, the first ballistic missile that um, was used, um, in World War Two, and uh, the, a lot of research was done there. There was, a, I think, there was a concentration camp called Flossenburg, and they used to do experiments there. Yeah, very grim times. But I am going down a rabbit hole, and I don't want to go down there. So let's haul it back, and let's investigate the beer. Right, five hundred mil bottle in a builder's half litre, as they as these bottles are known. It is 6.8%, uh, a little bit hefty, as you would expect from a Bock beer. The IBUs on this are 23, which is relatively sweet for a Bock, and it sort of, it goes by, well, it fits in with the style, because, as I say, it's very malt, malt forward, and the hop character is, is in the background, basically. This is all about the malt, and of course, if you've got um, quite malty beers, it's going to be sweeter because of the sugars that are in malt. So that really is, oh, I'll give you a look at the label. I mean, I did give you a look before, but here's another look if you're interested. I don't know what's happened there to the geographical status. There is ye oldie cap. Uh, what does it say in the back? Unser Frankischer Bock, our Franconian Bock. Natural, crafty, versic, oh yeah, basically. Yeah, it's just basically saying it's a, like a craft beer and it's supposedly tasting good uh, that's about it really so let's get it open and let's see what's going on with it now well, I'll use my posh cap lifter very efficient takes it off quite nicely there's another go at the cap if you want to have a look now, if you're familiar with the brewery Meisels, I think that's how it's pronounced, or Meisels, uh, they do the wheat beer. They're basically renowned for their wheat beer, and they're based in Franconia as well. They have a museum there, and they've got 5,500 beer glasses and mugs in there. Probably more now, that was a while back. So if you're ever in the area, and you want to see a lot of beer glasses, go to the Meisels Museum. All right, on the nose. Wow. Super sweet, really honey-like, malty, goodness on that. That smells really nice. Mmm, interesting. It's very, very, almost like, I wouldn't say artificial sweet, but it's like a creamy sweetness to it. Oh, hang on a minute now. Yeah, there's a little bit of, a little bit of hop spice noble hop spice coming through on there now mmm wow that really was sweet very um, cr sweet cream if you can imagine that that's what it was putting me in mind of it does look nice I will say that there is a bit of a haze on that uh, carbonation not a great deal head is quite nice uh, sort of one finger foamy head Wow, that's so sweet. All right, oh. It's almost like 1970s confectionery, if you can imagine that. Interesting. Um, obviously, I haven't got a sweet tooth, but this could be interesting. So let's shut up and let's get it down my fat Gregory Peck. Zum Wohl, as I say in Germany. Oh, ethanol, wow. There is, there is some ethanol in there. And despite all that sweet aroma, there is a fair amount of hop spice. What is that? There's a flavor running through it and I'm just trying to work it out. Let me dive in again. I 
I don't know whether this is my taste buds playing tricks on me, but I'm getting mild cherry notes, would you believe? Is that right? In a Bock beer? What the fuck is going on? And the aroma, it's cherry, it's sweet cherry. That's where I'm, that's what I'm being put in mind of. You know them sort of glace cherries, do you remember them? From the 70s, they used to pop them into drinks and stuff like that. Fuck knows what was going on in the cocktails. I remember every Christmas, me and mum would get some of them in and uh, we'd, uh, me and my sisters would steal them. They were really sweet, they were quite nice. They actually were cherries, but they were in some sort of juice. I don't know what the fuck it was. It wasn't alcoholic, I know that. But it's definitely cherry. But it's not a, it's not a strong cherry, it's, it's a very sweet cherry. Mmm. I'm sure that's what it is. That's what I'm getting anyway. That's really nice. And there is a nice bit of spicy noble hop character on there as well. The malt character, um, I've, I wouldn't say I've ignored it, but it's, at the moment, it's not really shining through. This is all about the, the slight ethanol that was on the, on the first mouthful. Then I was getting that sweet cherry and then the hop spice on there. So let's see what the, the malt situation is. Almost like a pilsner, if you can imagine that. Big noble hop character on there, which completely flies in the face of what I've just told you about Bock beer being malt forward. Um, the malt character on this is there, but it's being slightly overshadowed by the hops. And then there's that, that sweetness. It's almost like, if you can imagine cherry mixed with, you, you remember them fruit salad sweets? Do you remember them? A little bit like that. Fuck knows where they're getting that from. That's like a, what is that? What was fruit salad? That was like a rhubarb and sort of custard type flavor, wasn't it? Bizarre. What the hell is going on by Reuter? What are you doing to my fucking taste buds? Let's get the rest of it in the glass. Uh, this has really sort of knocked me sideways with its flavouring. It is nice, I will say that. Wow, look at that head. That is a really nice head on there. Very uniform, tightly packed bu bubbles, which is a, a good sign of a beer. Definitely cherry and fruit salad, that's what I'm getting. In a good way, not a nasty way. Sometimes you get that pear drop type sweetness on some of the macro brewed beers, and it ain't great. This is quite nice. Sweet and spicy, can you imagine that? How does that work out? Mind blown. There is a little bit of the, the bread, liquid bread type malt on the finish, but it's not big, it's, it's a fairly spicy finish and quite nice, sweet on the palate, spicy on the finish, with a little bit of uh, the bready malt. Nice, full bodied, mouth feels nice, no aggressive carbonation in that, and yeah, I'm liking that. That is a good one from Bayreuther. So what is the verdict on the Bayreuther Bock beer? Well, they're a good brewery. I do like their stuff. I remember their Hellas being quite good. I liked the Action stuff that they do. And this hasn't let the side down. A uh, little bit disconcerting on the first few mouthfuls. Normally you don't get ethanol on a Bock beer, but on this one, I did detect it. 
I've got a fair amount of hop character on there as well, which is something that isn't really characteristic of a Bock, but it's not unknown to have it on there. Einbeck certainly do it, and they're the originators, so who am I to argue with them? Uh, this is a nice one. The sweetness on it is a little bit confusing. Obviously, I think that's coming from the yeast, and it does give it a, I don't know, a unique twist, I would say. I've never really had that kind of sweetness before. It's a, as I say, it's a mixture between cherry and a fruit salad sweet. And I'm sure that's coming from the yeast. It has to be. And uh, all in all, it makes for a quite favourable drink. Now, this is 6.8%. You can't fucking go around necking this stuff. You have to take it easy. Otherwise, you will be falling over. And you don't want to be falling over. But that being said, it's very easy drinking. Full bodied, mouth feels nice, refreshing. This is cold, it's come out of the fridge, drunk, being drunk as it should be. And I have to say, that is a very enjoyable beer. And I'm gonna sit down here and I'm gonna savour that. And I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10, a solid eight out of 10. I quite like it. Um, I'd definitely buy it again if I could find it and I could get it over here. That would be definitely on the list. It's a good one. Uh, another winner from Bayreuther. And remember, Beer is working class champagne.